Hello! Welcome to the second installment of uh, Wicked Wednesdays with the Water Witch. So this has been a really long week and a really long day for me. Um, as many of you know, I have been uh, moving. And so today I spent unpacking boxes and boxes of magical supplies and herbs and more herbs and more herbs, and more herbs. Um, so, um, I'm very tired, so this may end up being a short uh, video blog, we'll see. So, I had two questions this week that I wanted to answer, and the first one is a little silly, but you know what, I thought if one person thought it, then many more might have, so I better answer it. And it was, are you recording in your bathroom? And the answer is no, I am not recording in my bathroom. Um, I don't know if there was an echo or if it's just this really big black curtain back here, but um, this is a window to the outside world and not my shower or my bathtub. Um, and uh, I have my altar right down here. Um, and uh, just let me see if I can turn this around. And here's another one. So as you can see, this is definitely not my bathroom. Uh, however, I may do a video vlog in my bathroom, just depending on how things go. I have a beautiful sanctuary um, in there that I was trying to the goddesses, um, water goddesses specifically. I have some beautiful plants in there and a amazing tub. So, um, beyond that, uh, the other question was, how do you get closer to Avalon when you don't live in the UK? So, that's a really, really good question. So, I'm actually going to uh, back up a little bit and give you a quick, quick explanation on what Avalon is and how that's incorporated into my practice. And um, I'm sure over the course of the year, as we do more video blogs, we'll get more in depth. So this is just very, very brief. So Avalon um, was first mentioned in the History of the Kings of Britain and, um, by Geoffrey Monomoth. And it's um, a very old text um, that can be a bit daunting to read. And um, it's actually the place that King Arthur was taken to um, when he was wounded in battle, in his, the final battle. And um, many people believe that Avalon is in Glastonbury, England. And this is a really interesting thing because I have um, a few thoughts on it. Um, it's quite possible that Avalon actually did physically exist in that area at one particular point in time, um, prehistory, in my opinion, if it did. But it does not necessarily exist there anymore. Obviously, it's a great pil pilgrimage site. I've been there. I've visited. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Um, it's got some interesting energy, both really good and interesting energy. Um, and so it uh, has that particular location um, is kind of the uh, modern uh, thought on where Avalon was. There are other places like the Isle of Lundy um, that is quite possible was the Isle of Avalon as well. I personally think that Avalon is Anun. It is the summer land, the underworld, if you will. And it is a place of great healing, of death, of life, of birth. It really encompasses the cycles. And so Avalon, if you subscribe to my particular thought um, that it is the other world, can be accessed anywhere. You don't just have to be in the UK, in Somerset, or Glastonbury to actually access those energies. Um, if you're lucky to have visited and collected water, of course, 
having the water, drinking the water, uh, doing a ritual bath with some of the water can connect you to that energy. Um, for those that don't know, there are two sacred wells um, that uh, bubble up uh, right next to each other, um, within feet of each other actually, and they come from two completely different sources. One is in, uh, fused with um, it's either calcium or lime deposit, they actually can't remember off the top of my head, and because of this, everywhere that the water is touched over time has turned white, so there's all these like um, white deposits everywhere, and so they consider this to be the white well. And what's interesting about the white well is that it's actually housed in a old well house, and it's candlelit, and it does have darker masculine energy. So I love that it's this white well that is dark. And then just across the road is the chalice well. And the chalice well has iron, uh, it's very rich in iron, so it has uh, red deposits. Um, and so everywhere the water has touched has turned this iron red color. And I really associate that with blood. And many people associate this with more feminine energy and um, it's surrounded by a beautiful garden. And I love how if the water is darker, blood-like in a way, but it houses, but it holds this more feminine, lighter energy. So we've really got the duality going on between the two. So using the colors of red and white, you can really um, uh, connect with those Avalon energies, which is mirrored in the apple. If you cut an apple in half, first off, if you cut an apple in half this direction, horizontally, you get the five-pointed star. And then you have this white meat of the apple that really corresponds with that white well. And then you have the outer side of the apple, which is red. The skin is red and corresponds with the chalice well, the red well. So that apple holds those energies of both the white and the red well, which are very, very important to the modern movement of Glastonbury and Avalon. So um, kind of going back to like the location of Avalon, um, you know, there's many different places over time that people have said. It's, most people believe that Glastonbury is or was the location of Avalon. I personally think that the reason the energy is so strong in Glastonbury is not necessarily because the Isle of Avalon was there, but that there's a portal. There must be a very large, strong portal. It's also possible that it did exist on this plane at some particular point pre-history. Um, I don't rule anything out. I um, believe in uh, possibilities versus restrictions. So in my personal opinion, anything is possible. Um, so with the uh, Isle of Avalon and the connection to Glastonbury and the White Well and the Red Well and the Apple, the next thing that can really connect you to Avalon is the Silver Branch. And this is mine here. Let me back it up. Here we go. And it's basically just a uh, apple branch and uh, it has some little silver bells on there. And mine actually came from a friend's house. She actually had a uh, apple tree in her front yard. And so this particular one is very special to me for uh, that reason that it came from a, a really good friend who's also a magical person. It also comes from a place that um, is a very narrow strip of land that has water on both sides, um, which is very, very close to the beach as well. So there's a very marshy swamp land, the land that holds the apple tree with some houses, and then the sound, and then of course the ocean. So it has that real water energy to it. I decided to go ahead and 
uh, make my branch uh, silver by using uh, a pearlescent mineral. Um, it's, uh, I think it's called Pearlex, and they're uh, gra finely ground minerals. Um, and I wet them down, and I rubbed them on after I'd, you know, prepared the branch the way I wanted it, sanded it down. And then I did seal it. I'm very, very big on using natural objects. I really don't like to have synthetic things, so I try and stay away from them as uh, much as possible, using things like uh, silver um, or uh, metals. And in this case, I wanted to have the branch be silver, but I didn't want to use acrylic paint. So I used the Perlex mineral. And um, so if you wanted to connect to the energies of Avalon, you could create and prepare your own silver branch. You can use this as a wand. Um, you can use it in meditation. You can use it to cast your circles. Um, you, you know, anything really that you want to. And it can be the tool for you that can open the gate to the other world, to Anun, to Avalon. The last thing is, um, if you don't know much about Avalon, um, or you want to know more, and you really don't want to dig through old texts like the Mabinogian, or um, the History of the Kings of Britain, or anything else like that, then I highly recommend uh, this book by Caitlin and John Matthews, which is the Ladies of the Lake. And Ladies of the Lake, um, it goes through some of the Arthurian women, and just to name a few, uh, Ygraine, Guinevere, Morgan Le Fay, um, there are some meditations, um, Nimue is in here, there's uh, several other um, uh, lake ladies that are presented in this book, and if you're really into the Avalon energies, the feminine energies, and want to connect to Avalon, I suggest you pick up a copy. I do not believe that it's in print anymore, but you can find used copies on Amazon. And, um, you know, I said that this is going to be a very short video blog, and I'm actually pushing almost uh, 12 and a half minutes at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, I'm going to also attempt to uh, attach a photo of my um, uh, a photo of an Avalon working that I did in the past and a, uh, a photo of that altar um, so that it can kind of give you an idea of what I use um, in my uh, practice and what imagery I like to use and pull in. So on that note, thank you so much for watching the second installment of Wicked Wednesdays with the Water Witch. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a wicked Wednesday.